thought I'd show you part of the process of setting up the gears. It's not it's not exactly something that everybody gets their head around immediately. So this is the the chuck spindle. That's that gear is the one that's driven from the lead screw. So for planing cuts when you're just flattening your your leg or rather making it round you want to drive this as slowly as possible. So if we take the smallest gear put that in there that gives us a drive of one tooth to one tooth no reduction going on there because we're not using it as a cluster and that will give you a five to one reduction so with this gear carrier clamped in place you take your drill you make sure that you're not jamming it hard in they don't actually want to bind you twist your drill around make a mark there and then with this gear turned over, you re-engage it. Same deal, don't press it hard. Put your drill through, make a mark, and that will give you the position of that hole. Then with your next size gear, you don't bother putting it on that way because it would still be the same one to five reduction as before. So you put it on the way it's intended to go, make sure it's meshed, and that would give you the position for this hole. Your next biggest gear, make sure they're nicely meshed, mark through it, that will give you the position for that. And finally you do the same for the big gear and that will give you the position for that screw. At this point you've done all you can for the time being. So you dismantle the end, take the gear off, take the gear carry off, drill through these five holes, insert your threaded whatever they are, T-nuts or hell coils or whatever and reassemble it like this. You try all your gears on and obviously they should fit. Um, you probably will get the occasional tooth which just catches as it goes around. So individual teeth, make a note of which is, take the gear off, battle it a little bit, put it back on. Now then, that's fine, that's for the lower set of gearing. That will go up to, I think, 100 millimeter pitch, which, unless I'm very mistaken, is, you know, the ratios escape me. 100 millimeter pitch, that's a four mil lead screw, so it must be 25 to one reduction. But for the next set, I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing in camera here, but I'm just taking the clamp off that I've been holding it with. Because this gear carrier is free to move. What we now need to do, we need to anticipate using not one gear, but two gears. So that meshes with the large diameter and the large diameter on this one meshes with that so now everything's gone wonky this gear no longer lines up with its holes so what we need to do is make a mark on here 
that's comfortably as far over this side as it can be without risking breaking out. Mark through. Take it, take this back off and re-drill this hole. The prime reason that this moves is so that you can swing the entire gear cluster around, bring another gear into play and get reverse. So we'll do that, we'll, we'll get this hole drilled, get an insert in it and then I'll probably shut up while I mark off the others. Okay, so that's where we're going to drill. Put a pilot hole through because these T nuts require a, a bit of a countersink if we're going to sit flush. So we'll do that first. 20 mil force in a bit. Inserts I'm using, which are 10 mil, require a 12 mil hole. So, what we'll do now. See that breaking through with the drills messed it up a bit, but this is going to mess it up even more. I found with the others that the best way to go on is to drive it in and then unscrew it completely, clean up this corner, and then put it back in. Just keep a little bit of downward pressure as you turn it. Not a lot. I suppose after it's half lean or so, you wouldn't need any pressure at all. Which will be around this point because I'm moving the entire drill press. You may be able to see how the, the wood is getting torn up by that big coarse thread entering it. Now that's about as far as I want to go. If you get too carried away doing this, you can actually deform this flange on the end. So it pays to just be a little bit careful. And the do go in considerably easier for the second time. Edge 
it's rounded over, just give it another tweak with the forcing a bit to make sure it's being left with a flat surface. And that will do nicely. If you notice, these inserts are 25 mil long. I've got two 12 mil thicknesses, which is 24. So that's going to need grinding off. And I've found a right nice way of doing that. And here it is. Who knew such a thing has been existed? A 50 mil flap wheel. I love little tools. I don't know why I just can't get enough of them. just till it touches the wood now the moment of truth These screws aren't shortening yet, but as you can see, there's nothing wrong with that. So the next year, I suggest clamping this while you do this sequence of events. Max repair. the next year Mark through there Mesh the next year I mark it through there so I'll get this clamped and uh, I'll get those marked off for drilling. You know how it's done now, so I shan't bother filming it. And next time you see me, I'll move on to the next bit. So here we are with all the holes in the gear carrier finished. The inserts are in and I've made up a temporary chart and a reference plate just to make it simple to find your gears. If you wanted a, a picture of 240, that will give you a ratio of 60 to 1. That's the lead screw thread to the t uh, table leg. You'd want a 32 gear on first and a 42 gear on here. 
and that you'd want those in hall A and hall 5, simple enough. The other thing I've done is add the, the slider. This gets used primarily when you're reversing the gear. All that remains to be done, um, you can just pop a gear in. When you want to reverse, I have to chop this lever down yet, so that this gear will actually mesh with that. The handle for operating the lever, for operating this, will come out of the back behind the gears. So all this is going to get cut off. Other than that, the gears are finished. They all mesh, they all turn reasonably well. A little bit of clunking, but the wooden gears when all said and done. So, <sighs> that's about it. I think probably the next thing to do, we need to mount the chuck. And we've got his PTFE washer down in there, so we could put the chuck on and drill the cross hole which is going to give it drive and then I think we start work on the carriage that's it for this video though I think there's enough there to keep you occupied for a day or two cheerio <laughs>